Right, so in this video I'll explain how to finish your PhD on time. Uh, this advice is based on my own experience. Uh, I managed to finish my PhD on time. I finished in three years, even though I had a full-time job and I have two children. So I think it's fair to say that I am qualified to give you this kind of advice. Number one is time management. I cannot stress the importance of time management skills enough. This is probably the single one most important skill uh, that you uh, that you will need to have and master in order to complete your your uh, PhD. Uh, so you you'll basically have to plan everything, as I'll uh, come back to in a second, and you'll have to manage your time, manage your time be uh, between the classes and after the classes and before the classes and and during the classes and and manage uh, your time for learning and studying and writing and reading and, and working and resting as i'll explain in a second as well so basically you will have to this is absolutely crucial that you have uh, perfect uh, time management skills the good news is that you don't have to be born with time management skills uh, when i think about my own experience i never thought i'm somebody who has this kind of skills and yet I was forced to develop these skills. So if you are motivated, if you if you want to complete uh, complete your PhD, if you want to finish it uh, in general, and also especially if you want to finish it early, you absolutely have to work on your time management skills and always stick to the deadline, stick to the time, stick to your plan. So uh, this leads us to uh, the second point and skill number two, which is planning. It's really uh, very related to the previous one. So basically you have to plan things and later you will need to manage them time-wise. Uh, again, if you watch my videos, you know that I talk a lot about planning. I have a, I have a few videos about planning. Uh, I strongly recommend uh, planning everything. Again, so as I just said, planning uh, the time off, time for your breaks, for your studying. And also I strongly recommend uh, having an actual desktop planner, so so a physical planner, something like a calendar where you can uh, write things down. I also have a video on how to uh, how to write your literature review quickly, and in that video I talk a lot about uh, planning. So planning on this micro scale, pl uh, micro scale on the scale on the level of your of a single chapter, but then planning every day what you're gonna do, how many articles you're gonna read and how much later on, how much you're gonna write uh, every day. And then extending that plan to, you know, a weekly plan and, and monthly possibly uh, plan. So, so this relates to everything. Uh, and again, I talk about it in my other videos, but this relates to your whole uh, PhD process. So planning on a micro scale where you plan each day and you, you plan exactly when you start uh, studying and when you have your time off, uh, but then also planning your weeks and your months and the whole year. So this year I want to, for example, read all the literature and complete or, or start or whatever uh, writing the literature review. But then in order, as I explained in that other video that I will link to, in order to be able uh, to plan like that for the whole year, you need to break it down uh, into smaller smaller units, smaller chunks. So plan your months and plan your weeks. So as I said, uh, planning is absolutely crucial, just as uh, time management skills are. So they go; these two go hand in hand. Of course, you have to plan things and then you have to manage things in terms of time. And uh, as I said, there is really no way for me to uh, stress this enough. And if I had to think back to my experiences and give you one single reason why I managed to, to finish uh, this whole thing so effortlessly and so quickly, that would definitely be because of my strict approach to planning, which also includes planning, uh, as I will explain in a second, planning uh, times for your days off and planning when you take a rest and all that. So plan everything and stick to that plan. The next advice, and it also relates to planning, is uh, make a schedule for uh, based around when you are most productive and most creative. So this means understanding uh, your own patterns, understanding your, your own strengths and limitations. So basically this is simply about the time of the day when you are the most productive. As uh, I'm sure you know, some people are most productive in the morning, some people are most, product, most productive in the evening or even at night. I understood early that I'm uh, the most productive in the morning, so I knew that 
everything that uh, has high priority, everything that's uh, the most important for me has to be done in the morning. So I could do things uh, in one hour, things that would take me one hour in the morning would take me three hours at night. So I, so I quickly understood that there is no point planning for uh, to do any work at night or in the evening. So you have to understand your own patterns, your own preferences and make your schedule around these, uh, these preferences. The next one is something I've mentioned already in this video and also something again related to planning. So you have to plan your days off, you have to plan your holidays, you have to plan your little rests uh, ideally throughout the day as well. Uh, this may sound ridiculous to some, some of you but it really is not. It's really very important. Again, I strongly recommend. I have another whole video on the importance of taking breaks and taking and, and resting. Uh, so I'll link to it. I really believe, and this is supported by scientific evidence, that it's very important to take uh, such breaks. So even uh, look, I know that there are days or weeks when you are really overwhelmed and you you feel like you cannot really afford to have an arrest you're behind and you have you know you have your deadlines but even uh, in uh, in this time and most difficult time it's still good to take breaks so if you so rather than working uh, working uh, non-stop uh, between Monday and Friday because you have your deadline on Friday I would still recommend taking a day off on Wednesday perhaps recharging your energy or creativity your batteries and then doing some more work on Thursday and Friday. Again, in my experience and also something that research shows, this simply works better than working non-stop because you may be working your stop, but you will not uh, you will not win against your body, and and your body needs uh, rest. So just like uh, in the example when I said I can uh, things that take me one hour in the morning will take me three hours at night. Again, if you're not rested, things will take you. Uh, longer to complete anyway so you need that rest and again you have to put that on paper this is very important uh, so that and you stick to that plan just like you plan your reading and writing and working you have to plan your rest and stick to that schedule and the reason it's so important to put that on paper is simply because you will be tempted to not to have that rest if you don't do that but if you stick to every every point from your list if you stick to your schedule when it comes to writing and reading and working and then force yourself to stick to that schedule when it comes to resting, you will simply learn to follow that schedule and listen to, to that schedule. So the next thing is really a mindset, a realization, something to understand. And uh, namely, you are in charge of this thing now. So you are the only person in charge of your PhD, essentially. You are a grown up now, you're an adult, nobody's going to hold your hand throughout this whole thing you're not in primary school and you're not in high school anymore so nobody really cares about you and nobody really cares if you succeed or if you finish that thing i know it sounds really cruel but that's uh, these are facts i'm not saying your dad and your mom don't care but i mean nobody really is there to guide you through the whole thing of course you have some resources of course you have your supervisors which is something i'll explain i'll discuss uh, later in this video as well but they are there to help and support, but they are not there to do it for you. So at the end of the day, this will only depend on you, on your motivation, on how you plan things, as I said, and, and how you stick to that plan and how you manage your time. Nobody's going to feel pity and nobody's going to feel sorry for you. So you just have to realize it. This is your life. This is your plan and this is your goal. And you're going to have to finish this on your own you're 100 percent responsible for this process now and the next one is i think it's very important uh, i really thought about uh, the way i managed to complete that phd and i think it's important to to find and understand your style your style of well everything of learning of working uh, of you know professional development and and every other thing because uh, the reason I thought about it is uh, I, I saw this uh, advice online and there was something that said uh, always leave your, if you're at the, at the campus and uh, in your office, always leave the door open because this will help uh, you uh, meet uh, new people and expand your network. So basically that's what this advice said. So people will come into your office and you know uh, start mingling and you'll get to know a few more people but but then i thought this is not w what helped me this is not uh, who i am 
Uh, I know it sounds it sounds good and perfectly makes sense to make you know a couple of new friends, but I would not do that. I was always uh, I always preferred to you know to literally shut the door and and focus on my work. So so that made me realize everybody is different, and you have to understand. At the end of the day, I'm giving you advice as well, but you have to understand that uh, you you are the person who's again responsible for this uh, for this thing. You are in charge. So. Uh, so this also relates to your your style, your learning style, and what you prefer. Another thing I always hated is working in groups, and and so many people advise me that you have to work and learn in groups. There are study groups, and there are you know uh, people meeting and and uh, working on their assignments. So this uh, this does not relate to PhD, but specifically to masters. Uh, and I hated that. I always wanted to uh, do things on my own. So this is just who I am. So. So I think this is very important. You can listen to all the advice that people give you, but at the end of the day, you have to make the decision and you have to understand, just like understanding uh, your patterns during the day that I mentioned, you have to under understand your general preferences and your style for how you want to tackle, how you want to approach this whole thing and how, how you will complete your PhD. The next one is about your supervisors. So essentially you have to understand that your supervisors are there to help. It may sound obvious and also may sound a little bit contradicting to what I, what I said before when I said you're on your own, you're in charge of that thing, but ironically because you are in charge of that thing, uh, this also means that you have to utilize your supervisor. So, uh, you know, you have to uh, stop thinking about yourself as just a student, as somebody maybe, you know, in primary school and high school where uh, you may have felt uncomfortable uh, asking your teacher, you know, for for anything or to especially to help you. Uh, but now the situation is different. The dynamic is different. You are here. You are an adult. As I said, you have your goals and you paid money. That's the most important thing. You paid money for that thing. You paid the university money. The university now is the university. Uh, the university's turn uh, to fulfill that uh, their part of the deal which means to deliver and to give you all the resources that you will need to complete this thing. You pay them money, they are giving you the resources. The resources are, of course, uh, the facilities, the libraries, the, the, the labs and everything else. And most importantly, your supervisors. Uh, they are there to help you. They are, of course, not there to teach you, so they are not like a teacher in, in high school. But they are there to offer support. So many times I hear about supervisors who simply are not good enough. They don't support, they disappear, they don't agree to have meetings when you feel like you want to have meetings. I have a, a, a video in which I explain, in the previous video I, I posted, I explain how to choose your supervisors. Th this is very important because this is something you'll have to uh, think about in advance before your PhD because you need a supervisor who is ready to offer support and then you have to be ready and 100% confident and not feel awkward, not don't feel uncomfortable uh, using, so to speak, that supervisor. This is the main, the most important resource that you have, so don't be afraid, don't hesitate to use it. And finally, and this may sound weird, but this is just a PhD. Remember, this is just a PhD. This is not your whole life. There are things that are more important in life. I do appreciate and I do recognize that uh, some people are in a different, a difficult situation. They they used you know their parents' life savings to uh, to study and they feel this pressure. Of course, I do not deny this, but still, this is just a PhD. And you know there are things like your family, there are things like your health, your mental health, your physical health these things are more important. So this also, in this piece of advice, this final point, I want to stress that you have to uh, th do things you like, uh, you know, not just go out. I was going to say go out, but maybe you don't like going out. Maybe you like chilling with your friends, you know, at your place or anything, or, you know, playing games or whatever. Don't forget about things you like. You have to reward yourself constantly. So PhD is, you know, has become part of your life, but it's not the main part of your life. So remember about your health, about, you know, exercising, about your mental health, most importantly. I personally knew people who really struggled and they were really, really badly affected uh, by by studying uh, mentally. So uh, so they, they came out of this thing completely ruined mentally. It's not worth it. So, so this is just, you know, my honest advice. 
Remember to prioritize your mental and physical well-being and to prioritize what you like, prioritize your family. If you live your, with your family, don't forget about your family. Spend time with them. You know, these years are important. You don't want to waste these years uh, just on, you know, studying and getting anxious and stressed about your PhD. So that's all in terms of the advice that I wanted to give you. Please don't forget to like this video to help it get found on YouTube and subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Uh, I hope that you learned something new and do not hesitate to add your advice in the comments.